So tell me something, when you think about Russia, what comes to mind? You're probably thinking something like this. But there is also another whole world in Russia and it looks like this. Let me show you what's going on in this mysterious country. Oh, I got the wrong wallpaper, give me a second. Well, so Russia, Russia is freaking huge. Just look at that. It's the biggest country in the world and in second place comes Canada. And Russia is two times bigger than Canada. You can get a train ticket from Moscow to Vladivostok and that's a 6,000 mile journey. And it takes you through eight different time zones and all the way to the Pacific Ocean. So inside this huge country there are 85 territories and 22 of them are called republics. Which is pretty much like 22 different countries inside the country. But the question is how did did Russia manage to get so big that it ended up having 22 different countries inside of it? John Harris from YouTube covers this exact topic perfectly, but I'm gonna give you a brief overview. If you don't care about the history, you can go straight away to the republics and I will have time stops and you can see the, the little play thing down there, it's separated in sections and there will be a section for each republic, so you can skip to whatever you want to. So you know Russia wasn't always that big. A thousand years ago it was this kinda small kingdom called Kievan Rus. It was one of the largest and most prosperous states in Europe. But Russia had a big problem. There weren't any natural borders to protect them. The land between them and the east were just steeps, which is flat grassland. And it's perfect for invading and you can cross it easily but a nightmare to defend. And the Mongols took advantage of that land. They invaded Russia, destroyed cities like Kiev and Moscow, and they ruled Russia for 200 years. So now Kievan Rus is broken internally. This weakened them, and they are now paying taxes to the Mongols. But a state called Muscovy, today's Moscow, was quietly rising and becoming stronger, and a regional epicenter for trading fur. Fur was pretty much trendy back then, and Moscow took advantage of that. And soon Moscow managed to fight back and started expanding and moving towards the east. Then in the 16th century Ivan the Terrible or Ivan Grozny in Russian became the first Tsar of Russia and he had some great ambitions. He decided to just keep pushing east. This is where things got interesting. He went to conquer lands beyond the Ural Mountains and there he found a land of ice that was personally populated called Siberia. And because of the cold there were many animals with lots of fur and you know that was their thing, I mean the fur market of course. The tribes populating Siberia had in the most part no objections to joining Russia, many of them actually found it beneficial to join a developing force, but those who had objections had to join the ugly way. You know how that goes. So Moscow grew exponentially and in the process it acquired other cultures that kept their identity, culture and even their own language. So as you can see Russia is pretty diverse, there are more than 120 different ethnic groups present. And those 22 republics have their own constitutions, they have their own official languages, they follow different religions, different cultural traditions and they even have their own national anthems. And they live within Russia's borders and I want to show them to you. First let's go to North Caucasia in a place called Adygea. It represents the indigenous Adygea people and there they speak Adygea and Russian. Just listen to how the Adygea language sounds like. <laughs> Crazy, right? And this place doesn't look like Russia. When you think about Russia, you think about snow, but it's plain with rich soils that are used for agriculture and there are many forests as well. Even though it's one of the poorest parts of Russia, it is famous for producing grain, tobacco, tea and sunflower. And tea is a big thing in Russia, Russians drink a lot of tea and it's the most popular drink there. And in Russia originated the samovar, which is 
a metal container traditionally used to heat and boil water. So Russia is very close to the UK in tea consumption, but the only thing we hear about is vodka. Somewhat close to Adygea we have North Ossetia, which is where I was born. A lot of people there speak Ossetic, which is one of the few Iranian languages still spoken in Europe. And there is a modern pagan religion there, and also a festival where people go to a small forest in the shape of a circle, they bring stuff, they pray, and it's forbidden to bring anything back from that forest, even if it's leaves from the trees. And also in North Ossetia there are some small houses where people back in the Middle Ages during the plague used to go there with a little bit of food and water to die. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. And next to North Ossetia we have Chechnya, which is kind of a unique republic. It was fighting for its independence for a decade without any success. And there are jihadist groups. And in the 90s and 2000s Chechnya was in the front scene of two bloody wars between the rebels and the Russian troops. And they were responsible for the biggest terrorist attack in the history of Russia in a school in North Ossetia. 333 people died and 186 of them were children. Ok, let's not go deep into that, let's keep it nice and happy. Moving towards the east, we have the Altai Republic, which is next to Kazakhstan, Mongolia and China. It's called the Switzerland of Russia and for a very good reason. It has an amazing variety of beautiful landscapes, from steeps to unpassable taiga forests, from snowy mountains to calm and beautiful lakes and rivers. And there are the Altai Mountains, the highest mountains in Siberia. It's pretty much like a huge national park, and their nomad culture is something else. The indigenous people of Altai, the Altaians, are Turkic people. They retain their native language, Altai, and their culture, like throat singing. And many people there are shamanists, who are believed to interact with the spirit of the world. And there are some things called kurgans, which the indigenous people believe to be magnetic instruments directing the cosmic flow to the earth. There is so much more into this, that you cannot even cover in those few minutes. Again a bit further to the east we have Buryatia, where in the past every household had camels, and they are trying to revive that tradition. There is the lake Baikal which contains 20% of the world's fresh and unfrozen water. And traditions are still alive in local villages, they combine nomadic worshipping of nature spirits with ritual offerings, songs and meals, like boiled lamp which bones are used for fortune telling. Next we have the largest of them all, Saka or Yakutia. It's the largest territorial subdivision in the world, it could fit 7 European countries in it. And it's the coldest part of Russia, temperatures can drop as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius and in the summer they can rise up to 40 degrees Celsius, which is a almost 100 degree change. Also Yakutia is called the treasury of Russia, it's one of the richest regions in the world in terms of natural resources. It produces 99% of all Russia's diamonds and 25% of the world's diamonds. Next we have Tuva, which is so much different than what you would expect of Russia. Also the most widespread religion is Buddhism, which again is not what you would expect. And that's awesome. And almost all native zones of the earth can be found in Tuva except for Savannah. And there is even a rainforest, like what is that place? And traditionally Tuvan people are a Central Asian nomadic culture with their own music, cuisine and folk art. Of course covering everything about Russia and everything about the republics of Russia would be impossible in a short YouTube video. I gave you a brief, a brief, very brief overview of the history of Russia and a very brief overview of the republics that we talked about. And there is so much more into the history of Russia and imagine how much you can learn about each region and things can get really complicated really fast. But if there is anything you know that I didn't mention because I cannot mention everything about Russia, feel free to share it with people and with me in the comments below, if this video reaches any people at all. So with all that being said, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.